Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech and with the Velvet, LG has tried to bring a lot of the things that set their phones apart like the dual screen, headphone jack and expandable memory and pack them into a brand new design. So how successful were they in marrying the old with the new? That is what we're gonna find out but before that, let's unbox this phone. So our LG Velvet comes with a dual screen case. We'll get to that later. First, let's focus on this one. LG has gone for a minimalistic look, a white box with just the Velvet branding on top. There is some more branding to the sides. Towards the bottom, we have that sticker. Let's now cut through those seals, open up the lid and take a peek at what's inside. First thing inside the box is the phone itself. Taking off the plastic wrap, and the sticker to the back. The first impressions, I mean, this feels to be, this appears to be a really tall phone. Slim, but tall, kind of like the new Expedia lineup. Anyway, we'll get back to the phone in a bit. Uh, the rest of the box contents, the inside a plastic baggie, we get the SIM ejector and some paperwork, a 16.2 watt charger and a USB type C cable. Switching over to the dual screen box, of course, it houses the dual screen case. The protective plastic wrap has got instructions on how to put the case on and how to take it off. The back has another sticker. So let's get rid of that too. Opening up the dual case, inside we have a quick start guide, a foam placeholder and this. This is the magnetic charging connector, snaps to the bottom of the case and that is how we can charge the velvet when it is in the case. By the way guys, if you've been liking what you've been seeing so far in this video, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Now with the Velvet, the first thing that catches the eye is this camera configuration. Shaped after water droplets, the camera setup is a nice change of pace from the rectangular camera bumps that we've become so used to in 2020. Now LG has gone with a nature inspired design here. We have curved Gorilla Glass 5 to both the front and back, which means despite the 6.8 inch screen, the in-hand feel for the LG Velvet is quite nice. Pick it up and it's hard not to notice how slim this phone is. Despite that, LG has managed to retain the headphone jack, so major kudos to LG for that. Uh, now the curved glass edges don't leave much uh, room to the sides, but again, LG has found uh, space to cram in a volume rocker, as well as a dedicated Google Assistant button, all on the left edge. Having a dedicated hardware key is always nice, but unfortunately LG doesn't let us remap it and that is a bit of a letdown. Coming back to the buttons though, the power button, LG has nailed placement here. With such a tall phone, the button placements can sometimes be odd. It could be uh, the power button could end up being a little too high and hard to reach, but I'm happy to report that is not the case here this time. And while we are talking about placements, the top has a noise cancelling microphone along with a hybrid SIM slot. The bottom is where we find the rest, headphone jack, mic, Type-C port, and the downwards firing loudspeaker. As for the front, it's dominated by this gorgeous 6.8 inch POLED panel. Now the jury's still out on if uh, curved edges are actually useful or not, but there is no denying this. This Full HD Plus panel looks gorgeous and screams premium. Now LG is calling this 20.5 by 9 panel a cinematic full vision display with a reported 88.7% screen to body ratio, I can see why. Now this screen flows right into the edges. The chin is super thin and up top we have a water drop notch where the 16 uh, megapixel f1.9 camera resides. It takes some pretty good looking selfies and the details they're on point. Complementing this widescreen setup, we have stereo speakers. Those can get pretty loud and paired with the POLED panel, it should make for an amazing movie watching experience. While we are on the topic of audio, LG have retained the headphone jack, but they've done away with the quad DAC here. That being said, they've included a 3D sound engine and once we turned it on, the Velvet sounded a lot more punchier with a wider soundstage. LG claims to have used AI-based sound processing to tune the sound output on the Velvet and the overall media experience seems impressive. Of course, adding on to the media viewing experience is the additional dual screen accessory for the LG Velvet. Like with the G8X, this does add some extra heft. The good thing though is that the new dual screen case, it has this grippy pattern to the back. It feels nicer in hand. The front too is matte plastic instead of reflective glass. A quirk that I noticed being carried over from the G8X is that even the dual screen has a notch just like the main screen. Thankfully, it is a flat panel and not curved. Now having used the G8X extensively, I now get how dual, dual screens can be incredibly useful. 
I have often found myself typing a text on one screen while watching a video on the other. And that's just one of the very many potential use cases. One of the most interesting dual screen modes though, it's gotta be this. LG lets us use one screen as a full blown controller. We can use, I mean, we can actually choose between several D pads and even create our own. As you guys might have noticed, we had Asphalt 9 running pretty flawlessly on the Velvet. That's because all those pixels are being pushed by Qualcomm Snapdragon 845. While I would have most definitely preferred to see a 855 at least, this is still an 8 series flagship processor from Qualcomm and for the most part it seems to get the job done. On the software side of things, we've got LG UX V10. Uh, it's been built on top of Android 10 and has a much more streamlined interface. We have some useful software features in here like support for a dedicated pen as well as LG's famous knock-on to wake up and put the display to sleep. So overall, a feature-rich experience that at times could feel a tad bloated. Thankfully, we have 6 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of onboard storage to keep everything chugging along quite nicely. Of course, the hybrid SIM slot also helps giving us room for future expansion via microSD. On the battery side of things, there is a very respectable 4300 mAh battery. Now guys, I know I've raved about this build quite a bit, but let me show you this. Uh, this is a 7.9mm thin device and LG has still managed to cram in a fairly decent sized battery. Now most flagships these days they are breaching the 200 gram mark but the Velvet it only weighs in at 180 grams so that's also an added positive. They include a charger 16.2 watts but the Velvet does support quick charge 3. Uh, up to 25 watt wired fast charging is what LG claims. Uh, I did mention wired because LG Velvet also supports wireless charging so that's quite neat. Which then finally leads us to the point where we started, the water drop shaped rear cameras. One interesting thing that I noticed is that except for the main sensor, the others are flush with the back. The primary here is a 48 megapixel snapper with an f1.8 aperture lens. Pictures generally turn out looking great with vibrant colors and good dynamic range. LG has also included a dedicated night mode here. Accompanying it, we have an 8 megapixel ultra wide as well as a 5 megapixel depth sensor. On the video side of things, the Velvet can shoot uh, at 4K and LG has included a button that makes it extremely easy to share our camera feed directly to YouTube live. In the Velvet, LG has a very capable all-rounder with all the bells and whistles like a curved OLED panel, in-display fingerprint scanner, a headphone jack and stereo speakers, super sensitive mics capable of ASMR recording, uh, IP68 water and dust resistance, an incredible aesthetic that should turn heads. But all these little extras, they do come at a price. 36,990 to be precise. That is what LG is asking for here. And if we add the dual screen case, it goes up to 49,990. Uh, I mean, of course, there are 5K worth of bank offers, but the Velvet is an expensive phone, especially if we, if we compare it to something like the G8X sale that recently happened. But you feel LG has done enough to warrant this price tag, you know, with the bill, the cameras. What do you think? Or do you think LG should have gone a different route? Let me know in the comments below and with that we get to the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.